Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on cross price elasticity of demand. Cross price measures the responsiveness to demand for a good X following a change in the price of a related good Y. So we're looking here at the effect that changes in relative prices have within a market. And uh, for example, we make a clear, a clear distinction between substitute and complementary products. So, first of all, with substitutes. Uh, examples, brands of cereal. Uh, with substitutes, these are products in competitive demand. An increase in the price of one good will lead to an increase in the demand for a rival competing product. So therefore, the cross price elasticity of demand for two substitutes is always positive. Complementary goods are in joint demand. That means if you buy more of one good, you're likely to buy more of another. And uh, the, the cross price elasticity of demand for two complements will always be negative. Always. Keep in mind in the exam, of course, just writing down the formula will get a correct mark. So for cross elasticity, it's the percentage change in the demand for X divided by the percentage change in the price of Y. Here's a couple of examples we can feed into that formula. Let's assume, for example, that the price of Dr. Beat's studio headphones uh, goes up from £20 to 220 a 10% increase, or £20. And that leads to an increase in demand for a competing brand of 5%. So what's the cross price elasticity? Well, there's been a 5% change in demand for the competing brand following a 10% increase in the price of Dr. Beat's headphones. Divide the change in demand by the change in price. Gives you a plus 0.5 coefficient. That tells us that these two goods are fairly weak substitute products. Perhaps because consumer loyalty to Dr. Beats is especially strong. Here's another example we could focus on. This table shows uh, two goods, X and Y. And we see the price of X falling from £30 to £15. People buy more of X, but they also buy more of Y, which suggests, of course, that these two products are complements. Again, putting the numbers into the formula, there's been a 50% reduction in the price of X, and that's led to, in percentage terms, a 60% increase in the quantity demanded in Y. So putting the money into the formula, we get the figure of minus 1.2. And that suggests that these two goods are complements and also fairly close complements. Let's just go through this again so we're really sure. With substitutes, the cross price elasticity will be positive. And the closer products are of substitutes, then the stronger will be the coefficient of elasticity. With complements, the cross elasticity is always negative. But again, if they're close complements, for example, games consoles and uh, associated software games, then we'd expect a highly negative cross price elasticity. Uh, we, by the way, keep in mind that unrelated products uh, have a zero cross price elasticity. I'm assuming here that a change in taxi fares in a city centre has no effect on the market demand for cheese. But of course, you may know different. OK, so how do we show cross price elasticity in a diagram? Let's first of all look at substitute products. Notice the labelling of the axes here. We have the price of X on the Y axis the demand for Y on the X axis. So in this example, there's been an increase in the price of X by a small amount, and it's led to quite a significant increase in the demand for Y. Now that suggests these two goods are close substitutes. In this example, can you see the difference here in the relationship? There's been a big in increase in the price of good S from P1 to P2, but only a relatively small increase in demand for a substitute good T. So this would be a good diagram to draw to illustrate two weak substitute products. Now, what about complements? This time, the relationship, of course, is a negative one. In this case, if the price of A falls a little bit from P1 to P2, we see a substantial increase in demand for B. And that suggests the two goods are highly complementary to each other. Whereas in this example here, a big fall in the price of good E only leads to a relatively small increase in the demand for good F, a, uh, 
a weak complementary relationship. Okay, so we're looking here at cross elasticity of demand and the key thing I think for, for you guys revising this topic is to make the distinction between substitutes and complements. So if we think about cinemas as a really good example here, uh, the price of cinema tickets in the UK has been edging up quite, quite a bit over recent times. Indeed, in many parts of the country, you'll pay way more than £10 to see a film. But just thinking about some of the substitute factors affecting demand, so the rise of and the cost of online streaming, Netflix, Amazon Prime, etc. Uh, the relative price of direct DVD purchases from the shops, uh, pay on demand films from your Skybox, for example, or from uh, Apple TV. And also the relative price of alternative entertainments, including, for example, e-gaming, e-sports gaming in cinemas. So those are some of the substitute factors. But also there's quite a few complementary factors which, which will affect the, the demand for cinema seats, if you like, at a given price. The relative price of food and drink, uh, the, app, the availability of apps to enhance the customer experience before and after the film. Uh, perhaps some discount programs for cinema goers or the cost of parking and transport. For example, free parking outside the cinema could be a relevant factor. So when one thinks about the cinema industry, there are many substitute and complementary factors that will influence the total demand for cinema tickets at a given price. OK, so I hope that was useful. We've just been through some of the key things related to cross price elasticity. I guess the most important thing to take away is the distinction between substitutes and complements and the fact that the closer the relationships are between those two products, be they substitutes or complements, the higher will be the cross price elasticity of demand. Thanks for joining us again on this topic video. Check out our website, tutor2u.net and our YouTube channel for loads more videos. See you soon.